Why did the cloud ready Android app cross the road? To get to the other fired OS. Oh, you like that one. Doesn't make any sense. Who has two thumbs and likes to run 20 tabs on ARM processors? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> How many Samsung Galaxy Chromebooks does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> That's not the joke. One. But it'll only stay on for three and a half hours. <laughs> All right. All right, this one's a bit raunchy, but um, let's see, here you go. Why was Chrome OS 82 bad in bed? I'm sorry. Look, are you, is he okay? Sir, are you, are you okay? It's not real. It's not. No, no, no. What? It's not, none, of us are, none of this is real. What do you mean? It's not real. Oh, hi. Um, what was I doing? Chromebook news. Yes. Okay, let's get into it. I noticed this month that some of the podcasts I listened to changed sponsors from like NordVPN to ExpressVPN. So in the spirit of a fresh start, I've also changed sponsors. Who to? Not telling. So new Chromebooks have come out and reviews are everywhere. After spending a little while stuffing them all into my face, Here's how I would summarize it. The Samsung Galaxy Chromebook is a premium device with an intriguing set of ports and features. And it, it feels so good. And the screen looks amazing. It's probably one of the best screens I've ever seen on any laptop. Also, the Galaxy Chromebook has more than enough operating power. However, great stuff comes at the cost of that battery. And so this is easily the best Chromebook ever made. Though, if really long battery life is the only thing you care about, you're better off saving a little bit and getting maybe a Pixelbook Go, for example. Sounds like an amazing Chromebook. It's just not an all day device. That'll matter to some more than others. But what do people make of the Asus C436? It is quite well made. And? Definitely a snappy system. Mm -hmm. But really the biggest issue you might have with this model, aside from the price, of course, is the battery life. Because the laptop falls far short of Asus's battery estimates. And there are some nitpicky little things wrong with it. Sounds like a decent Chromebook from Asus, but not perfect considering the high expectations. And with its fairly high price, a lot of reviewers still seem to recommend the Asus C434 instead. So those are the big launches, but on a more modest scale, there's a new version of the Asus Spin 13 out there with an updated CPU. The last Asus Spin 13 was such a great all-rounder, so this looks pretty good. There's also a new Lenovo, a new, Le a new Lenovo IdeaPad 3, and the Lenovo Chromebook Duet tablet looks great, and like it might start shipping just a week or so into May. And there's a new Asus Chromebook 314 on the way this month as well. Still not much info on that upcoming Lenovo Flex 5 though. That one should be interesting. In other news, there's there's always a lot of worry about there about Chromebook update expiry dates and lately there have been some new initiatives to combat or alleviate those concerns including the eight year extended updates for some Chromebooks and here is another initiative. It's some cool news about Google working on separating Chrome OS and the Chrome web browser itself on Chromebooks so that they can be updated independently. This would mean that even if your Chromebook had stopped receiving Chrome OS updates, you could still have the latest version of the Chrome browser, including whatever security updates that entails. They're calling it Le Clos, and it'll be a while before it's properly implemented, but you can read more about it on 9to5Google. In other, other news, some progressive web apps have started appearing on the Google Play Store. Now this is cool stuff. As we know, the Google Play Store is usually reserved for Android apps alone, but now if you're on a Chromebook and you try to install something like Twitter, you're going to get the PWA. This is a great streamlining of Chromebook apps and a welcome admission that PWAs are generally better than their Android counterparts. A sign of things to come. But that's all just stuff and nonsense compared to my favourite news of the week, which is that Crostini might finally be coming to the Samsung Chromebook Pro. In fact, for a little while there this month, a few Reddit users managed to get it working. The catch is, it was working on Chrome OS 82, which no longer really exists. Chrome OS 83? No luck. So we'll just have to wait and see when this update arrives properly. This good news is likely to extend to other devices like the Asus C302 and the HP Chromebook 13 G1, both of which I have a nostalgic fondness for, so I'm ecstatic to see them getting the support they deserve. Finally, 
Although really, this should have been done a long time ago. Software-wise, things are progressing pretty much as expected. Chrome OS 81 hit stable around the start of April, and we can expect 83 to do the same towards the end of May. Version 83 will pack a few nice updates, but what they are exactly changes all the time, with some already being pushed from 83 to 84. Ready for the next segment? It's a famous one. Story time. On Android Police, marvellous Mr. Manuel Vanau has written a very down-to-earth piece about switching from MacBook to Chromebook. He's very frank about the many little limitations and concessions. A great resource for anyone considering such a change. Marvellous Mr. Manuel also has a more general Should You Chromebook piece for the same realistic commentary sans the Apple perspective. Now I turn my ear to you! Oreo Dave says Go team, everything dark mode. Yes, Dave, yes, get in. Dark mode squad, assemble. Felix the human says, no one ever mentions one of my favorite things about my Chromebook, how big the control and alt keys are. Bloomin' heckity heck. He's absolutely right. Kenneth Brownson writes, love Chromebook, tired of windows and the problems. I am so over the problems. Jeff Knight says, Keep doing what you're doing and be on a top lad. Thanks, Jeff. I don't know what accent that was. Flacky says, this guy metaphorically blessed me. And now I shall literally bless you. Bless you. Lalo Novocaine says, I would appreciate it if you add subtitles in Spanish because you have little command of the language. Lo que dijiste implicaba que soy bastante malo en español, no que sé un poco de español. Asumo que te referías a esto último. Gracias. Gangster Lama says, This might seem random, but do you have a brother named Matthew? No. Robert Timsar says, Thomas, you could just simply use an affiliate program as your sponsor. Robert, I have loads of sponsors. They're constantly emailing me. I'm swamped with too many sponsors. I don't, how dare you? But also that's a lovely tip, thank you. Thank you all for coming on this journey with me. It's a treat to read your comments after I post a video, even if it's just, hi. I take pleasure in every single one. Have a magnificent May. Namaste.